It is that time once again. It is time for us to take on the Reach and try to eliminate them from the game. I've been doing a lot of progression off screen. Not too much, so you didn't miss anything really, but basically what I wanted to do was try to prepare us for the elimination of a faction. And it does take a bit of time to actually get that going, because obviously the enemy vassals are everywhere. They're trying to be very subversive. They're trying to take all of the thieves that I have taken back and it is kind of a kind of an ordeal most of the time but anyway what I've also done is I've tweaked the difficulty slightly so basically considering we are currently wearing some pretty amazing armor I've basically just increased the amount of damage that I take and everything else is basically the exact same thing because I know you know I do die I do die quite a bit but I have taken quite a long time to die recently, thanks to the, the fact that I do have some pretty decent armor. Not, not, not the best, obviously, but it's decent enough. And if you'd like to take a look at my difficulty right now, there it is. There's the difficulty, and uh, yeah. So basically, usually, a, a while ago, I would usually have campaign AI on, on its worst setting, because I really do not like grinding situations. I don't like it when the AI has, you know, 600 units in a particular garrison and you kill 500 of, the, 500 of those and then they get 600 back within a day or something like that. So there's just some crazy scaling going on there. So maybe that will be tweaked at some point, but at the moment I haven't found it to be that bad. And it also does improve their decision making on the world map. So that's pretty decent. Otherwise, usually I will have this, this damage to player on half because, let's face it, I usually like to run in, you know, I run in, I take a lot of damage, and, uh, you know, in general, generally my foolish decisions are more, uh, <laughs> more damaging to me than a difficulty setting, so that's generally the reason why I will not have it on normal, but everything else is basically on normal, so hopefully those of you that missed the episode previously when I did actually display my difficulty again which was as I said before just with the half damage to me on then uh, hopefully you will you will catch that and then you don't have to comment it because you know it's there you know it's in the series it's in the series so you can actually see what's going on there anyway I am doing a naval battle and I could have chosen what to do here I could have done a field battle or I could have done a siege defense now generally a siege defense is definitely preferable in efficiency terms and you know what I mean by that you know it, it's because we basically lose no units I basically take no damage and I'm able to get a huge amount of experience and just in general basically murder everything in sight but it's a bit boring, you know, it's a bit boring. So it's definitely something that I don't want to end up doing more often than I have to. So instead, I'd like to do a little bit of naval battling and see what we can do with this. Because personally, I find naval battles pretty fun because you get to board the enemy ship. There's a whole bunch of units immediately. You don't have to wait for them to travel across the entirety of the map. And in general, it's just a lot more fun. Now, obviously, I'm going to end up losing many, many more units as a result of my decision to do a naval battle or even a field battle in comparison to a siege defense, because let's face it, you're always going to have a much better time doing a siege defense than you would doing either of the other two, because, you know, it's just going to be way, way too easy to, you know, defend in a siege defense against a lot of units, whereas in these, in these kinds of situations, you're going to have some difficulties here and there. Because, let's face it, you're right up against the enemy. Look at that. Yeah, this is this is a heavy Reachman Knight. He hit me on the head. Loads of damage. Did you see that? Usually that would have dealt 12 damage on the previous difficulty setting. So you can kind of imagine how much more I'm, I'm going to, you know, how much more damage I'm going to take and how many more times I'm going to die. So, you know, may, maybe it will, I don't know, maybe we'll tweak it. Maybe it will change. Who knows? But... At the moment, I'm just going to leave it as it is and we'll see how we do. Because if I die too much due to my overzealousness in uh, charging into the opponent, and uh, then that ends up being a little bit tedious, 
then, uh, you know, and I'm talking about not just for me, but for you as well, because obviously if I end up dying all the time, then Elias is not even going to be featured in the series anymore. It might as well just be some random guy. So, kind of makes sense to try and keep him alive as much as possible. And that brings me to the next point. I think I'm probably going to try and get a crossbow at some point soon, but obviously at the moment it's a bit it's a bit difficult to do that because if I do get a crossbow, uh, then I have to take off my two-handed warhammer and just use my cleaver and shield or something along those lines. Basically, I'm going to have to choose between one or the other. And I would like to choose the Warhammer, of course, because in my opinion, the Warhammer is fantastic. I think it's a really, really fun weapon to use. This is some weird stuff going on with the boats here. Apparently, this one is half sinking. Okay, this is a this is a new map, actually. This is pretty cool. I got to say, this is pretty cool. I like this. Anyway, yeah, this is the point. Even if I end up losing, well, half, maybe 75% of my army, I really don't mind, even though I'd like to try and keep as many household guards alive as possible. It's just, I would really not want to do another siege defense. Oh, there, there are so many times when I've done a siege defense and I thought to myself, okay, another one of these, eh? Hmm. Yes, I, you know, it's, it's come to the point where at some points I am literally just leaving the keep to literally just be taken and then just taking it back after the fact because I really just don't want to do any more siege defenses. There are just so many that come up nowadays and it's just too much. I just can't do all of them uh, feasibly because otherwise if there's, you know, a siege defense at one moment, like let's say I started this, this particular video with a siege defense and it lasts for you, probably, I don't even know, 5 minutes or maybe even 10 minutes. and But for me, it's about 20 or even 30 minutes, dependent on how many units there actually are. So it can get quite drawn out, and that's definitely something I don't want to have. So, anyway, I'm going to stop babbling on now, and uh, we are going to continue to wreak havoc among the Reach and their vassals, and we will hopefully be victorious in this naval battle. And there it is, another 20 renown for us right there. We eliminated another 66. Thankfully, we're not taking that many casualties, at least in that particular round. And we have 138 against 231, and we have another similar layout. So, uh, yeah, it's going to take me a bit of time to get to the enemy. Let me tell you something. The hero of this particular round was Garrett Longley. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? I don't know. I don't know whether I can believe it myself, even though I was here to see it. Anyway, I actually did not see him actually kill any of the people that he actually did take out. But you can see here, he's the only companion that was able to get 10 kills. What a crazy guy, right? Yeah, absolutely. 136 against 165, and the same layout. And with that, I think that might be the end of the series of naval battles that we have here. I hope so, at least, because uh, I'm not really getting to do any... Uh, yes, I'm not really getting to do that much, because, as you can see, my units tend to go onto the ladder, and they, they just kind of squeeze in there, and there's no way I'm going to get to the front, because just look... There are so many units going over there, and there's, I mean, there's only 39 remaining, so it's, it's not going to take that long, I suppose. Elias is always watching. Just look at him. With his helmet on, you can barely see... You can see everything, can't you, Elias? Look at that. You can see absolutely everything from there. So many holes, and not, not a lot of vision. Let's just say that, yes. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, he's just watching the battle unfold from a safe distance because, as I say, it's basically impossible for me to get over there and actually deal damage. But as you can see, we now have only two enemies remaining. My Dragonstone household guards have been invaluable in this naval battle because they are so incredibly difficult to kill that most of the enemy are just really not able to do that much. Obviously, as you've seen, I have lost about 20 or so units in this entire endeavor, but that's really nothing. Thing. In the grand scheme of things, that's really nothing because they had about 450 when we first started, and now they do not. And uh, we can take these guys prisoner, which I think we might do. Uh, yeah, I think we might do that because even if I do take them prisoner, they only lose three relation, and 
at any point they can ask for a ransom and then hopefully we'll be able to get a good amount of cash from them. And otherwise, uh, I guess I could get some more people to sell here. There we go. That's actually very nice. And then we will... Ooh, that is a nice horse. Yes, I will take that instead of my lame one. And I will let the lame one heal up. And then we'll, uh, we'll keep it in our inventory for world map speed, I suppose. Now, what do we have here? Okay, so basically what happened after the naval battle was there was another vassal. I took care of him. He only had a, about 120 or so units. Pretty easy to deal with. We lost another five or so, but that's, that's really nothing. Anyway, I have found a battered full plate armor. I've actually found reinforced heavy plate armor for a cheaper price. What? What's actually going on with this? Why, why is that? Oh, I think it's because this is battered. Obviously, this technically would be better if it wasn't battered, but unfortunately it is. So I'm thinking I will buy this reinforced heavy plate armor because I have previously, previously said that I have not seen in any marketplace better armor than this. But that's because I gained this from a battle and actually not from a marketplace. So this is fantastic. It's going to cost me 10,000 though, which is basically the same amount as a Weavery and Dye Works. So mm, we kind of have to weigh it up. I think it is going to be worth it because we're gaining 15 armor to the body, which is really, really good in my opinion. So I think we're going to do that. And uh, I think actually, I, I, I think I saw a comment where someone said that if you sell armor to the armor merchant, you're going to get more money for it. Now, personally, I don't think that's the case because I have obviously tried that in the past and it hasn't made any difference. But we'll, we'll, tr we'll just try it out here because I'm going to sell a couple of things just to uh, get rid of some stuff. So let's say this helmet right here. Yeah, so this to the armor merchant is going to sell for 135 so let's actually go to the goods merchant and it sells for 135 so it's basically the exact same thing there really isn't any difference in where you go in my opinion at least and let's see uh, I'm just gonna sell here so that and might as well keep that all right so I have enough to buy the massively better armor so I suppose we will do it there we go wow what a crazy, crazy thing for me to do. Okay, so I am at the arbor at the moment, and hopefully I will be able to rest up here and not be attacked by a significant amount of Reach vassals. Now, this is a pretty unique siege. Now, I have decided to uh, defend here, mainly because there are no people in the garrison, so I was basically just able to get here in time because this is Old Oak, and uh, it's, it's pretty far away, and I saw it under siege, and I thought to myself, okay... We're going to go over there and we're going to see what we can do. Maybe we can uh, do some damage, try and prevent it from being taken. And apparently this is actually a North Vassal that defected at the uh, at the events of, uh, well, the, the quest that I completed previously and uh, kind of messed everything up. So obviously, yes, we're going to see some Northern units this time around. So that's, that's pretty interesting because we don't usually see these guys. And obviously, as you can also tell, I am a bit injured because I literally moved as soon as I had equipped my armor and uh, I did wait for some time, a little bit of time and I did also take Sir Baylor Hightower prisoner because uh, he was on the way and he was actually besieging something else and he only had about 60 units so nothing really to worry about there. Now these guys, they're pretty, they're pretty easy actually. I'm kind of surprised. I mean, oh, oh, wait a minute the enemy vanguards might be pretty good because they have these massive halberds of some kind so I suppose they are gonna do quite a well quite a considerable amount of damage now you may have may or well may or may not have noticed but I've given Elias a title or a nickname in this case and uh, this is actually a suggestion from one of you out there and uh, it's War Bear, because obviously, you know, the uh, the Mormont banner is a bear. And, uh, well, we're doing a lot of, you know, warlike stuff. So, you know, why not? Let's, uh, let's, you know, stay in keeping with what we actually are doing here. I think that's a pretty cool name. And who knows? Who knows? Maybe we will change it in the future, dependent on what kind of things we are doing. I know that I 
should have probably changed his name a long time ago. There were a bunch of people actually suggesting things, but I just couldn't choose between them, so I decided on nothing, which, uh, yeah, that's, that's not always the best idea, is it? But anyway, point is, we are, we are going to go forward and uh, try and give Elias all kinds of nicknames in the future. And uh, there you go. We've actually defended Old Oak, and uh, he was just about to take this. So I'm pretty happy that we were able to prevent him from doing so. And there's our, there's our kill count as well. Ah, he managed to escape. Ooh, another unique siege. This is actually really cool. And we're now on the offensive this time around, so we're kind of... You know, splitting things up a little bit and keeping the tedium at bay, for the most part. And uh, obviously, I am doing a whole bunch behind the scenes. So there's, you know, hopefully it's, um, <laughs> hopefully it's kind of dynamic for you. And it's not actually going to be a bit of a, well, shall we say, a bit of a slog. Because obviously, you know, Warband can turn into a slog very, very quickly. Because obviously, you've got to think about how many... How many keeps there actually are for us to take there are a huge amount of them and if you think about me taking each and every one of them by myself which is actually what's happening right now because dragonstone i have no idea where dragonstone is i'm not entirely sure what they're doing but if you think about that it can it can get very very difficult indeed especially for one person to do all of this by themselves so i'm gonna hopefully be able to take a rest relatively soon because this is uplands this is uplands it was uh well there's basically only 25 people I, actually what there's actually more people than that okay i actually thought that there were only 25 here but apparently there's more anyway point is once this is done i should be able to head on to one of the last remaining fiefs that the reach have available to them and then we will have them cornered Back to a much more conventional siege offense here, and Elias is finally at full HP. Yeah, it's taken a bit, well, taken a bit of time for him to get back to full strength because we have literally just been fighting constantly. And obviously the siege and the, you know, creating the ladders and all that sort of thing, that has given Elias a little bit of resting and breathing time. So, what we're going to be doing here is this is the last fully garrisoned keep that the Reach have available. So this is going to be fantastic if we can take this. If we can take this, this is going to be the last, well, basically the last breath of the Reach, or at least I can hope so, because I would like to fight a different enemy, if at all possible. I think that would be nice, and uh, hopefully we will be able to do that. I think we're going to probably turn our attention to the Westerlands once we have kind of stabilized this area. Obviously we are in constant war at the moment, so it's very difficult to do that at the moment because it's, well, wartime and people are wanting to attack us almost all the time, so it's kind of difficult to get any garrison to fill up and uh, I believe I actually saw that there were a number, uh, an actual, actual significant number even of enemies near to Tumbleton. And you know Tumbleton. Tumbleton has uh, has a pretty significant garrison. It's actually, well, in the uh, in the hundreds. So obviously there's definitely someone out there that wants to take a very large garrison and attempt to defeat it. And that's a, that's a pretty, pretty brave statement indeed because I would have expected something like that to not really happen anymore considering there are many, many castles, namely the ones that I've taken and not asked for, by the way. I'm not taking any of these for myself because, let's face it, I would much rather have King's Landing or something along those lines. I think that would be kind of fun. But that's obviously a little bit in the future because we're not, we're not really ready to take, you know, King's Landing by ourselves just yet and I'm not entirely sure if I will be able to persuade... Stannis to uh, to go over there and actually help us out and I don't even know whether he's going to be that much help to be honest because he's running consistently from down in Dragonstone territory all the way up into the north right next to the wall and that is really bad that is really really bad because that means that he is not present in most of the battles that we're currently doing here and it's kind of a shame to be honest because I'd love to see him in battles to be honest and uh, I think it would be really really cool what is actually going on here I'm taking zero da oh yeah zero damage because all of these are pikemen 
Yes, all of these are pikemen. So this is exactly what I mean. If you have a good amount of armor and your enemy is, well, pikemen, you're not going to take any damage. It's literally... It is hilarious. And you know what? I'm actually going to show you my difficulty again, just so that you can actually see that it is actually on normal. Because I know that if you do reduce your uh, your difficulty modifiers or whatever, you know, then you are going to take a little bit less damage here and there. But I haven't. I haven't done it. I haven't done it yet. Even though it is a bit tedious to die all the time, which I actually haven't. It's kind of surprising. I actually haven't. But anyway... Maybe that will change in the future. We'll, we'll see. It depends on the kinds of enemies that we're going to be facing. But I did take a lot of damage from those enemy vanguards. The enemy vanguards are obviously capable of doing quite a bit of damage with their two-handed swords and all that sort of thing. So I'm hopeful that I will be able to survive here because my shield is obviously not the greatest. So let me just hope that I can survive and maybe do some damage with my cleaver. Yes, yes, okay, we're actually getting in here, very nice indeed. I'm actually kind of surprised, because I thought I'd probably get shot almost immediately. I do have to be a bit careful, though, because turning my back on them is going to be, well, ill-advised. And I do have to be a bit cautious as well now of, of the fact that they can literally just kill me with a piercing attack. And uh, that would not really be very good. But thankfully, slashing and cutting and things like that, they're not going to be able to do that much to me with those. Because, let's face it, cutting damage against a heavily armored opponent is just not good. It's really not going to do that much in the Clash of Kings. So there it is. We were able to take the last remaining fief. Now, don't get me wrong. This is not going to eliminate the Reach altogether. Because they still have... Three, I think? They still have three castles that they've taken back in the time that I have been constructing these ladders, which is also a, a point of frustration, but that's just how it is. You know, that's just how it, it's going to be. And uh, anyway, let us uh, take this guy prisoner. I have a huge amount of them prisoner, by the way, right now. Look at this. I have, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow, eight of them prisoner that is pretty fantastic and i will thankfully now be able to head onward and hopefully eliminate the reach once and for all but that will be it for this episode i thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time